Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This is your guide on your brand new Golf R. Uh, you may find, depending on what options you selected, some of this um, information uh, may be relevant to you, some of it might not be. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to leave it um, in the comments section. Let's get into it. Now the car comes with two keys, this being the key here. You'll notice that you've got your R symbol, which is unique to the Golf R. You've got three buttons on there, so you've got lock, unlock, and also your hatch release. And then they also give you a jackknife key if you ever need to get into the doors of the car. Uh, there's actually a cap that sits just here. That actually pops off, and you can put the jackknife in in case your, uh, your key gets flat. With the car's key to entry, if you wanted to lock the vehicle, You'll notice at the moment that the mirrors are folded out because the car's unlocked. If you wanted to lock the vehicle, there's actually a little button that sits just here on the door handle. Just push your hand against that and you'll lock the car. You'll know too because the mirrors will fold in. If you wanted to unlock the vehicle with the key this entry, just simply reach through with your hand and open the door. Regarding the fuel cap, it actually works off the central locking and it's a push release, so there's no button or lever inside to uh, release it uh, inside the car. So if you actually just walk up to it and just push it on the edge here, it'll just spring open. And then just to relock it, just push it back in. Again, the car's unlocked. If the car was locked, you wouldn't be able to do it. Releasing the hatch of the vehicle, we use the badge because the badge actually acts as a handle. So just simply push on the top and then just pull it up with your hand. Now inside um, the rear, you do actually have these triangles located on both sides. So when it comes to the actual cover, if you want to lift it up, the triangles will actually hold it in place so that it doesn't fall down. And then that way you can access your spare tire and any tools that may be appropriate. Uh, if you've got the Dynaudio premium sound system, you'll notice that your sub actually sits inside the spare there. You can just simply unscrew it. Now, if you want to fold the second row forward to put some items in the back of the car, there's actually a button that sits just up here. So you just pull that in, and it folds forward. Also works the same way on the other side. If you need to access the engine bay, and you need to release the bonnet. If you have a look down here, this is the lever, just pull that, like so. To pull up the bonnet, if you just put your hand in here like so, up on the top part of the bonnet, there's a little uh, push sort of lever, just push it in, and it goes straight up. Now inside the engine bay, if you wish to check the oil, your dipstick's just here. If you want to top up the oil, that's located just here as well. If you want to top up your uh, your wipe fluid for your windscreens, that's located just here. If you have a look inside as well, they do give you like a little catcher to stop rubbish going in to the tank. Now inside the cabin, if you want to adjust your seat, you've got your controls just here. So this button here will control your lumbar support, so your lower back support. This one here will help you shift the seat so you can either move it backwards, move it forwards. You can raise it as well, and you can also lower it. This one here does your actual back support as well. There's also an option where using these buttons here, you can actually pre-save your seat position with the side mirrors too. Once you've adjusted both your seat and your side mirrors, if you wish to save it, push the set button and then push the appropriate number. If you ever need to re-save it, just again, readjust both items and then just to re-save, just push set and then the appropriate number again too. Now inside the cabin, uh, first thing I'll show you, if you have a look to the door, uh, you've got your little control unit here for your side mirrors. So if you want to change it to either adjustment for the left mirror or the right mirror, you can do that. And then you can just move it around like a joystick, like so. That just represents off. 
This one here will turn on your side the mist function as well. And then this one here will actually just fold the mirrors in manually if you wanted to. You also have buttons for your windows located on the door. And this button here will stop uh, your passengers from winding down their windows. This is located just to the right side of the steering wheel. This controls your headlights. Now it's set to auto mode or dusk sensing mode at the moment. So if we just turn it back to here, that's off. Back to auto. That turns on your parking lights. And then that's just manual mode for your, for your headlights too. If you wish to engage your fog lights, uh, all you need to do is actually just pull the button outwards towards you. Now, if we have a look around the steering wheel, first things first, we've got on the left stick our indicators. So left indicate and also right indicate. This also operates your high beams too. So if you actually just pull it upwards, you'll notice that there's a blue symbol that comes up as well. If I lock the stick forward or tap it forward once, I should say, you'll notice that the symbols change to a white symbol with an A. That's for your automatic high beams. The car can do its high beam operation uh, automatically at night time. So if there's oncoming cars, uh, the high beams will actually turn off until the cars pass or move off the road in front of you. If we look to the right side, so we've got this stick here, which does your, uh, your rain sensing wipers. Now to activate automatic mode, just push it upwards once and that's now set to auto. Being that this is the Golf R as well, you do get paddle shifters on both left and right hand side. Now you'll notice that this side has a minor, so that's to downshift. And you'll notice that the other side has a plus, which is to upshift. Uh, it also has an off symbol there too. So what you can do if you're in manual mode, if you push and hold like so, up or oh, sorry, towards you for a second, it'll take you out of manual mode. It'll just take you back to, to normal either drive or sports mode. Now, if you ever need to adjust your steering column, we just have a look underneath here. That's the lever there to release, like so. And then you can adjust the steering wheel accordingly, depending on your preference. Now, at the very front of the steering wheel, we have two sides. We've got left side and right side. Starting on the right side, you do have voice control located here. So if you push it in, you'll notice it on your head unit, you'll have some commands that come up that you can use and interact with. You can cancel it as well, if you like. Now, being that all Golf R's come with the digital display as standard, to control what's displayed there in front of you, you've got arrow keys located here and also here. There's also an OK symbol which you can have a play around with. So for example, let's just say, we've got the map there at the moment, but let's just say I'll push it to the right. If you have a look at the screen, you can take it off the map and you can run, say, your audio menu. You could run your telephone menu here, if you've got one connected. You know, vehicle status, there's a lap timer. Driving data, which has, if you use the actual up and down keys here as well, instead of showing consumption, there's actually quite a few options here. Well, you can show your range until empty. Um, you can even, you know, for example, have your digital speedo in the middle if you choose to. Now, if you push the view button here, so if you have a look at the screen now, at the moment it shows gear and speed. So in the center dials, we've got park and zero. If you wanted to change that to like your consumption, you can, or one of the other options. And if you put view again, that's how you can sort of switch it. So it's really customizable. It's really your preference as the driver how you want it to look and uh, what information it gives back to you. And then below those buttons, just here, uh, you've got your track selection or your radio station selection, um, depending on what you're listening to. If you're connected via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that'll also switch between your song lists as well. Now on the left side of the steering wheel, we have all of our buttons for our adaptive cruise control, just here, that's shown. This one here, if you actually push it in, it brings up a quick reference guide to your safety system. So if you wanted to use the arrow keys, you can actually scroll through and tick or untick certain features that are on the fly. Like I've had some people tell me that they want to turn off lane assist because they might be driving down like a narrow road. So you can actually just do that sort of on the spot without having to go through 
you set a screen. Now, if we also have a look, you've got your button here, which turns on or turns off your adaptive cruise control. Now, if I turn it on, you'll notice it down the bottom, we've got three dashes that have been highlighted now. So if I wanted to set a speed, let's just say I was driving at 100 kilometers per hour and I wanted to set it, all you need to do is just push set right here and then 100 will be displayed and that little um, odometer logo there will turn green to let you know that it's been activated as well, okay? If you've had to tap the brake to stop it momentarily and you want to restart it, just push res right here. Now, if you want to change the increments, you have plus 10 and minus 10 and you have plus one and minus one as well. So for example, just give you a quick idea, if I wanted to go up from 30 to 40 to 50, so I'm just sort of pushing that there. Again, if I wanted to go down, I just hit the minus symbol. Now it's not labeled, but res and set do act as plus one and minus one as well. So just remember that if you can. Now below those controls, you have your volume control as well. Now below the gear stick, you do have your park brake. So there's no handbrake in this car. So if you wanted to release it, you can just put your foot on the brake and push it down. Light will come off. If you want to reapply, just pull the button up towards you. There's also an auto hold function as well, which is like a hill start assist. Essentially, if it's on, uh, what will happen is when you take your foot off the brake, instead of rolling forward or rolling backwards, the park brake is still on and it won't release until you actually tap the accelerator because the car knows that you want to go. So take it off, just um, make sure it doesn't glow. Now around the gear stick, we do have a few different buttons here. So I'll start on the right side. So this button here, so, and at the moment we've got our fuel economy stats up there on the screen. If you actually push it in, this will actually engage your park pilot. And what it does, it's like a, it's like a top down sensor review around the vehicle. So if your sensors are starting to go off and you're not sure which sensor is going off, this is how you can check it. On the left side, you have your button to disable your traction control. Above that, you've got your button that turns off the idle stop-start technology. And then above that, you've got your mode button too, which you'll probably use quite a bit. Now, if you depress the button in, you'll notice that on your screen, you've got a few different options to select from. If you're curious to know what changes on the car when you're using it, you can actually push on the eye symbol there, and it'll actually tell you. There's also an individual mode where you can actually personalize it as the driver. And at the top right, you have your button to actually turn on the car. Now, there's two ways you can do it. If you leave your foot off the brake and just push the button, you'll go to accessory mode and just turn on all the electrics. If you put your foot on the brake and push the start button, it'll actually engage the engine. Now, just ahead of the gear stick, we've got a little cover here. If you actually push it in, it'll release. And it might be a bit hard to see, but there is a there is a USB port located right in the center there. Camera's not picking it up, but it's definitely there. That's where you plug in for your Apple CarPlay and your Android Auto. Now for the air conditioning controls and your heated seats, uh, this is the, the area that we'll be looking at. Now the car does have dual zone climate control. So if I was in the passenger seat and I wanted to be at a different temperature, I can just turn the dial like so over here. If I'm driving the vehicle, I can turn this one. If I wanted to sync up both left and right side, I can just push the sync button and have it engage. Again, if I was the passenger, if I wanted to get out of that, I can just turn the dial again and that'll just turn that off. You'll also notice that that's the off button there. If you push this menu button here, that'll actually bring up the air conditioning screen on the head unit. This is your fan control. You've got max demist at the front, rear demister, max AC, and just standard AC. Heated seats are the outer buttons at the top here, so that's for the front passenger side. That's for the, the driver's side. Now there's three levels of heat. You've got high, medium, and low. So all you need to do is just push the button multiple times until you get to where you want to be. If there's no lights that are showing, it just means that the heated seats are off. And then you've got your airflow control also up the top here as well. Your hazard lights located just above the head unit. Glove box, you'll notice that we've got the CD player. 
and some SD card slots that you can plug into for your music. You'll also notice too, if we look right under here, it's probably a bit hard to see at the moment, but there's actually a little dial that you can turn. So if you can see the snowflake just there, that means that you're actually siphoning your air conditioning into the glove box. So essentially it can act as a cooler. Now, for those of you that have sunroofs, uh, your control for the glass is actually this middle button just here. If you don't have a sunroof, you just won't have that button there. You've also got interior lights just here too. For the actual cover, just use your hand like so. Now, with your center screen or your head unit, if you will, this is probably one of the more detailed parts of the car, only because there's a lot that you can actually do with it. At the moment, um, there's sort of two main screens you can sort of choose from. You've got um, the menu screen, which is this one here. To get to it, you can just push the menu button just there on the, uh, on the left side there. There's also a home button that you can push to which will take you to like another sort of title screen, which gives you sort of a bit of a few features, which is quite handy. If you also click on menu, that's page one. If you swipe like a tablet, there's also a second page. And then if we have a look, there's also a button there that turns on and off the radio. And then you've got your volume control there for your music too. Now, looking at the menu here, probably one of the first things that you'll want to do is connect your phone. So if you click on telephone, uh, this screen will pop up it'll say please find Volkswagen Bluetooth 8103 on the mobile phone and if you watch now I'll show you how to do it uh, on most phones I have an iPhone but on Android uh, you'll just go to the appropriate settings All right, now, seeing that I've connected my phone, uh, you'll notice that it actually says Ian's iPhone up the top there. And if we have a look up here too, it also shows your battery life and your phone reception as well. If I hold my hand up to the screen, you'll notice that some of the buttons or options become available down the bottom here. So if you wanted to dial a number, you can. The breakdown number or the roadside assistance number is already pre-programmed in. Uh, all of your contacts will be in your contacts folder there too and all your call history is here too and there's also a settings option where if you actually click on it here and go to user profile there's a few other things that you can have a play around with too now in regards to the radio if you just push on radio here you'll notice that we've already got some presets that are in the car okay they actually give you quite a few that you can have a play around with now, at the moment, you can have a, a sort of a bit of a look here. Uh, some of them are empty because they haven't all been pre-filled. So let's just say, for example, we've got Triple M selected, or if you wanted to choose something else from the station list, you can. So let's just use gold, for example. Now, if I wanted to pre-save that to number seven, once I've dialed into that station, just push and hold. And it'll come up. Now, you'll notice that the station logo has actually been pre-filled as well same as with the others. There's actually an option where if you click on settings and click on station logos, and let's just say for example gold, you can delete that logo or if you wanted to sort of activate a new one, uh, you can via either a USB or an SD card, you can actually copy the logos into the car. You can also change the arrow buttons on the steering wheel to either flick through the station list, so all of the stations, or you can have the, the controls actually go through just your preset list that you've got. Just back at the, uh, the screen here. Now, if we have a look at media, this is essentially where you can play all of your music into the car. So if you click on source down here, these are all of the options that the Golf R has. Now, SD1 and SD2 and the CD, DVD player we've already sort of touched on. Uh, the USB port again is just located inside past the cover here. 
Again, probably a bit hard to see on this phone, but that's okay. Uh, WLAN is the car's own wireless connection. So if you had, for example, people sitting in the back of the car and they wanted to play music from their device, but you still wanted your phone connected to the vehicle, you can actually do that. Uh, the jukebox is a car, the, sorry, it's the actual um, car's hard drive. So if you wanted to copy music in again via say SD or USB, uh, you can actually save music to the car itself. Now, next that we'll talk about will be navigation. Now, sometimes you might get a little box that pops up, so you can just hit the X on that. Now, it's quite easy to use. You can actually use it like a tablet, so you can move the, the screen around with your finger. You can also sort of pinch to zoom in or, uh, sorry, pinch to zoom out and unpinch to zoom in if you need to. If you can't remember where you were on the map, you can actually just push the car symbol just here and that'll just bring you back. Uh, you can enter in a new destination via the first button just down here as well. You can either just start to type it in straight away or the other option, what I like to do, just to make it nice and easy, is if you push on the flag symbol there and select step by step, uh, it actually becomes more predictive and it works off the suburb first, not the street first, uh, which is just yeah quite handy. Uh, next, you can also pre-save destinations to the car. Uh, you can also save your home address as well, if you choose to do so. Uh, POIs is for the blue icons that you see, so they're what we call points of interest. So that could be anything from, say, uh, petrol stations, restaurants, car parking, hospitals, you name it. Um, there's actually a list that I'll show you shortly where in the settings you can actually choose what points of interest come up on the map, which is quite good. You can also click on the view and change it from, say, 2D to 3D. At the moment, we're running in night mode because we're in the showroom and the headlights are on. If I turn the headlights off, it'll actually get a day mode and you'll notice that it's actually quite bright. So again, you can have it set or run off the headlights. You can also uh, change your media that you're listening to. Um, you can also change the volume of the voice. Navigation announcement volume. Navigation announcement volume. As you can hear, again, your preference. Um, and also to uh, you've got settings down here where you can further personalise um, further options of the, the satellite navigation. So, for example, if you click on route options there, quite a few options to select from, you know, things like avoid motorways or ferries, toll roads, tunnels, all that type of thing. Um, with the map as well, here is where you can actually change what POIs or points of interest that come up on the map here. Um, if you go to select categories, there's quite a few options or segments, if you will. Uh, maximum, I believe, the car that you set is about eight of them. So, for example, you might not want to see amusement parks. Um, you might not want to see banks. You know, there's boating there. You know, you might want to leave cafes on there. You know, you might want to tick casinos and, I don't know, char not necessarily charging stations for this car, but, you know, cinema. So you can actually sort of personalise that. Next, we've got your App Connect. Now, on our YouTube channel, we do have a separate video um, that shows you how to connect via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So if you wanted to have a look at um, those videos, you can. You just wanna make sure, if you have a look at the top here, it does say, please connect a device via USB. Your phone has to be connected to the car. It will not work otherwise. Only the car's standard Bluetooth connectivity will work wirelessly. Now the last menu that I want to show you, uh, which is probably the more in-depth menu out of all of them, is the actual vehicle one. So we click on it here. Now there's two parts to it. You've got your driving data um, options. So you'll notice that we're on the fuel economy at the moment. If you click on selection, these are the other screens that you have access to. So feel free to have a, pl a play around with those. If you click on settings, and I'll do some um, some little segments shortly, but there's actually quite a lot here that you can actually personalize. Um, and we'll start to run through those now. So the first one that we're gonna talk about, everyone, is the tires. So this is where you can actually preset the tire pressure loss indicator. Now, if you how it works, it actually works off the rolling diameter. So if the car senses detect that your rolling diameter has changed on one or multiple wheels, 
uh, I'd like to give you a warning so you know to check them. Uh, once you've checked them, if you've needed to pump them back up, um, or if you've needed to buy new tyres, once if, if that's been sorted, if you come back into this menu and just reset it, that way you won't have any issues. So next we'll talk about light. Now in here you have all of your lighting features. So as you can see, there's already some boxes that have been ticked. Uh, dynamic lights is for your auto high beams. So that, that's, that's been ticked there. There's also a corner in function too where the, the, the headlights will actually turn slightly as well to give you more visibility. The switch on time is for the dusk sensing part. So if you wanted your headlights to sort of turn on at their earliest, as soon as it starts to show that it's getting dark, just turn it on to early and vice versa for the others. Uh, you've also got ticked uh, the automatic headlight control in rain and also the convenience turn signal is what I call the three flash. So when you actually indicate, your indicators will flash three times as well. Now next we'll click on driver assistance. This is where you can choose and select how your safety features work. So if you have a look, again, use it like a tablet, scroll down. You just want to make sure that all these items are ticked. If there's certain items that you don't want to use, don't forget you can use the quick reference guide that's located on the button on the left side of the steering wheel. Next, we've got parking and manoeuvring. So this is where you can change uh, the sensors, how they sound and how loud they are. And you've also got your manoeuvre braking and your rear traffic alert safety systems here too. You'll notice that they've both been ticked. Next, you have mirrors and wipers. So this is where you can control um, both of those items. Again, there's certain features that you can sort of have a play around with as well. Some people like to have their passenger mirror lower when reversing to minimize um, scuffing of the, of the wheels and the tires. Um, if you don't like that feature, you can just untick the box. But uh, if you wanna have a play around with the other ones, feel free to do so. Next, we have opening and closing with a few different features. Now you can change the central locking on how it operates. You can also have the car lock itself when you drive away. Um, there's also a feature where it says that the top there, window operation. It's got convenience opening all windows. Uh, essentially what you can do is, and I'll show you uh, next, you can actually wind down the windows uh, all together, or you can actually wind them all up together as well. Uh, just using the key from outside of the vehicle. Now with the instrument cluster, uh, there's multiple menus here that you can actually select to either view or not view in your digital dash. You can also reset your since start and your long-term driving data as well. Now, if you ever need to change the time and date, you can just click on here. And at the moment it's set to manual. You can actually run it from your mapping system, so from the, the car satellite navigation. You just want to make sure, though, that you've got the, uh, sorry, the correct uh, time zone selected. So for us, obviously, we're in Eastern Australia. Now, also, you've got this button here that you can actually turn on or turn off the daylight savings time as well. So, um, yeah, just make sure that you tick that or untick that appropriately. And then if you want to set uh, either 12 or 24-hour time, you can also do it in the screen here as well. Anything that you do on this screen, so if we have a look now, let's just say for example, we click on the home screen. So you'll notice that the time comes up the top here. It also comes up in your digital dash as well. The last one that we'll sort of talk about here uh, is service. Now, this particular car that we're in was obviously in the workshop recently. You can tell because it doesn't have 365 days. It shows 323. The car will let you know when you're due for a service. So for the people that do a lot of kilometers each year, you'll find that you'll be in every 15,000 kilometers. The car will give you a warning when you've got about 1,500 to go. For those of you that aren't doing 15,000 Ks per year, we'll see you once every 12 months. And again, the car will let you know based off your time if you're not doing the kilometers. Now, one last little thing that I'll show you Click on personalization here. You can actually save, uh, where are we? you can actually save your name to the car and actually have your own profile. And the reason for that, if we scroll down here, 
you can actually assign vehicle keys to like current user accounts. So let's just say uh, you're a husband and wife, you both had your own key. You can actually pre-save not only the seat and the side mirrors, but all of the other car settings, the actual key fobs as well. So if you wanted to actually yeah, use your own key, not the, the same key. Um, if you actually click on here, would you like to sign the vehicle key to current user account? When you click on sign, the car will ask you to hit the unlock button on your key fob. And then once you've done it, um, just simply turn the car off and lock the car and then unlock and it'll all be saved. Now, the last feature that I wanted to talk about, it's probably one of my favorite features, is you actually have uh, the feature that I mentioned before, the convenience opening. If you use the key and you just push and hold the unlock button, you can actually wind down all the windows. And for those of you that have a sunroof, it'll actually uh, put your sunroof to the vent stage as well. This is very helpful for when it's summertime and the car can get a little bit hot. Instead of you having to jump inside to air the car out by dropping the windows down on the door, you can actually just use the key. It also works really well for um, if you, say for example, leave a window unlocked. If you actually push and hold the lock button on the key, you can actually wind up all the windows and you'll also notice that the sunroof is closed as well and the car's locked because the mirrors have folded back in. Again guys, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one.